Hello and welcome into this week's live edition of High School Roundup here on CUTV. I'm your host, Anthony Diagostino, and alongside me, as always, the dynamic duo of Daniel P. Beck and Stephen Ruffing. You don't have a middle name. Nope. Just Stephen Ruffing. Whatever works. Good work. Guys, <laughs> had a great week of high school football playoff action. Uh, some teams are already in their championship game going to Heinz Field. Some are in the semifinals of their, their round. Uh, but nonetheless, some great football, some upsets, and some easy victories as well. Yeah, it kind of stinks. I haven't covered any high school football uh, the past few weeks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, nonetheless, we're going to see some highlights yeah. and uh, see some, some good football action. Yeah, I mean, it's not stopping. Uh, we're still on. We're still doing high school roundup. Uh, a lot of great football has been played. That it has, and we're going to jump right into them highlights as California took on Union at uh, Cannon Mac, as you see the California Trojans coming up, and then Union trying to stop them and commit them, have the upset, the handshakes happening, and then the opening kickoff is away. This one to Trey Charles at the 10-yard line, and Charles coming up the middle has a huge hole, gets to the outside, Still has some room as he's going down the sideline. Breaks another tackle, and he is into the end zone on the opening kickoff for 90 yards. California then on their drive, driving down the field, ends up committing a fumble off of a bad toss, and Union's able to pick it up. However, Union not able to do anything on fourth down. Their punt is blocked by California. Union will pick it up, though, but it will be at the 11-yard line, and then California... Right here, Colin Phillips keeping it himself, getting an eight-yard run. That will set up a California touchdown. That kick is good, but then another California fumble right there as a bad handoff by Colin Phillips led to another turnover. This time, a touchdown from Union off of that uh, fumble as Evan Pinkerton tossed up a four-yard pass to Michael Flowers. And then another California fumble as Colin Phillips lost the ball. However, California's defense really is the story here as they commit the sack there on Union's quarterback, Evan Pinkerton. Then on their next drive, Jelani Stafford will not be taken down as he gets a 21-yard touchdown run rolling over the Union defenders at halftime. Cal was up 22-13. to And then Colin Phillips does it himself on a 15-yard touchdown run. The two-point conversion would be good. And then California once again, Jelani Stafford this time being taken down just short of the goal line, and that'll be a touchdown for California on that drive. Then Evan Pinkerton, a 37-yard pass to his brother, Seth Pinkerton, on a beautiful catch there. Then the Union touchdown right after that. Evan Pinkerton scrambles and finds Pater for five yards. The two-point conversion was failed. California would score a touchdown later, and then the last score of the game, Jelani Stafford runs up the middle for a 20-yard run. California wins 43 to 19. California's next game is versus Monte Christian, who they played previously. But guys, California's defense won them that game. Uh, on that and Jelani Stafford, but they had, I believe, four turnovers in that game. Every fumble they had was Colin Phillips' fault, but just a union was able to pick it up every time. And sometimes California's defense was able to hold it, as you saw the sack there. But I was surprised to see the, the amount of turnovers that California had this game. Yeah, that is uh, kind of concerning, especially uh, looking on into the playoffs uh, for this California team. Could be a little bit to, due to the jitters um, and neutral site field. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those, those highlights, you can definitely see uh, the strength of Jelani Stafford. I mean, Steve and I looked over at each other, and he, when he laid out that block, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and he laid just a, a huge hole uh, for Colin Phillips to run through, um, just the sheer strength that he has. Um, on that California backfield, it could be dangerous. And what I'm looking at is California, if you make those turnovers, if you're um, <clears throat> turning the ball over like they did in that game, Monte Christian, they're a team that's going to take advantage of that. So just uh, tighten up, buckle down on offense, and I think you could really do some damage against Monte Christian. I mean, it was very cold. It was about yep. 20 degrees outside when yeah. we were playing. But it's not going to get football. warmer. It's not going to get warmer, but Union didn't turn the ball over like right. California did. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of just buckling down, yep. going back to basics, and controlling the uh, the handoffs and the tosses because they run a lot of those those jet sweep tosses yeah. mm -hmm. to the outside, and you just got to be able to control the football. As we continue on to the single A playoff scoreboards here, Clareton defeating Carmichael's 37 to 12, Olsh losing to Amani Christian 20 to 12. As we 
continues there. Rochester defeat, uh, loses to Jeanette 30 to 26. But guys, Jeanette was losing this game for basically the entire game up until the middle of the fourth quarter. Yeah, and you said it best. They were down double digits in the fourth quarter, and Rochester took a 26 to 15 lead. Uh, that's that lead that you were talking about midway through the fourth quarter when Caden Mersing recovered a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown, and Jeanette also scored twice after that to keep their season alive. Um, this victory for Jeanette uh, has to carry on later in the season, later on into the playoffs, and uh, just getting that victory early on in the playoffs uh, could translate to success later. Yeah, definitely. We're going to take a look now at the bracket for the single A left side. California taking on Imani Christian. And guys, we saw this before. California blew out Imani Christian. They scored over 40 points against them in the regular season. Can they beat him twice is the question. Well, we saw, <clears throat> I know this is two different conferences, two different um, uh, rankings or whatever, uh, but TJ beating Belvern in the playoffs. We'll get to that later, but uh, Belvern beating them early in the season. You never know what's going to happen. California is uh, pretty inexperienced in the playoffs, especially recently. So um, facing Imani Christian, it's going to be tough. But uh, with the power they have in their running game, uh, in that defense that we saw against Union, I mean, if that team shows up minus the turnovers, I think they could. Uh, I think they could beat Imani Christian. Yeah, and the playoffs are just unpredictable. Uh, you yep. really can't. Uh, say one thing will prevail over another, one team will prevail over another because it's a completely different season. You basically start back from uh, zero and zero, if you will. Uh, so yeah, this California team really has to translate that success uh, that they had against um, Union last week. And that game will be at Peters Township. Uh, again, California taking on Amanda Christian. On the other side, Clareton taking on Jeanette. And guys, that's going to be a showdown right there. And that's a pick em, right? Yes. Okay, good, because this is one of the best rivalries in single way, and uh, it's really going to be a showdown. Um, but Clareton really has to watch themselves because against Summit Academy, there was that bench brawl, and Jeanette and Clareton are much bigger rivals than Clareton and Summit Academy. So Clareton really needs to stay disciplined in this one. Yeah, and you were talking about last last year even uh, when this rivalry was ramped yeah. up. I believe it was the Clareton Jeanette game that the point did um, last season. Uh, Whatever, regardless, right. regardless from it. Uh, this game is going to be a fantastic one, and really we're in for a treat for that one. Moving on to the double-A Whitfield playoffs. East Allegheny getting blown out by Washington, 54-7. to And then Avonworth falling to Riverside, 42-14. to As we continue on, Sierra Catholic falling to Cardinal World, 35-14. to Steel Valley defeating Burgerstown, 42 to nothing. But guys, Cardinal World defeating Sierra Catholic, 35-14. Big numbers for Cardinal World. Cardinal World, they're coming in as the number four seed. Their man, Zach Rocco, three touchdown. He threw for two, and he ran for one. Um, they, advanced the, they advanced to the semifinals the fifth time in the past six years. They won 35-14 against this good Sarah Catholic team. But Rocco, five of eight for 105 yards. Uh, Nika Hill-Green, 41-yard touchdown pass. And Tyree Brown on a 37-yard scoring chance. And then Rocco, he gave the Trojans their first touchdown on a 61-yard run. So a lot going on with Cardinal Whirl in this game. I mean, they were just simply the better team against Eric Hathaway. And also, Cardinal Whirl uh, was up 35-0 at halftime. Um, and, I mean, I know that we have experience with that. You have to keep that scoring up. Uh, if you don't score in the second half and you let that team come back, um, I mean, we don't really have that many stats on here as to what happened in the second half, so there might have been a different storyline. Um, but really, you have to keep that momentum going uh, because then that could fizzle all out. Looking at the bracket now for the two-way playoff, Steel Valley will be taking on Riverside. And then on the other side of the bracket, Washington at Car against Cardinal World North Catholic. Guys, that Washington Cardinal World game that's intriguing to me. That's also picking me in because these are two powerhouse teams going against each other. Absolutely. I mean, this Washington team, Washington team, um, in the regular season, of course, you see this a lot. You know, they're they have their ups and downs, of course, but they are veterans in the playoffs and they've been here before. So uh, we'll see what happens. I know a lot of people are waiting for that Steel Valley Washington final in Double A. And Carnival looking to, 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 to upset yeah, that exactly. and take on Steel Valley. As we take a look now at the AAA scoreboards here, Beaver defeating Aliquippa 14 to, excuse me, following Aliquippa 14 to 7, and Quaker Valley 
blowing out Seton LaSalle 40 to 7. And continuing on the scoreboards, excuse me, not the scoreboards, the uh, brackets. Aliquippa taking on Quaker Valley, but guys, the Aliquippa Beaver game was a very close one, and it was a pick 'em game. It was kind of surprising to see Beaver follow us into the Aliquippa Clips. Yeah, it is definitely interesting. Um, Aliquippa, one of those more experienced teams as well in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, this Aliquippa Quaker Valley game, uh, it's kind of intriguing to me at least, um, just to see who really comes out on top. You know, Aliquippa has that that strong offensive line. It's everybody talks about all the time. Um, so we'll see if that if that helps them out in this one. Um, but yeah, pretty good, pretty good matchup so far in these in these brackets. And before we go to break, Colin Kirkwood is on set with us. And Colin, you have some news. That's right. Steve, as you know, if you watched last week, officially won the title of hometown champion. So we are going to award him with the hometown trophy here. It says you're the winner on yep. it, in case you can't tell. It's a little hard to see. Yeah, but it, Steve, any words? Uh, I personally didn't win this trophy. Um, Steel Valley Ironmen, who are still on a roll, they're on about 25 game winning streak right now, still flying in the playoffs. I just want to say best of luck to them, and uh, I wouldn't have got this uh, very nice trophy without them. So in the meantime, we'll go ahead and, as I have joined everyone, we'll just go ahead and into my thing, as Anthony said before, commercial. So we'll take a look at the scoreboards that came from last week as we look at them. The first matchup we had, I believe, was Central Dauphin indeed, and they were taking on Mannheim Township in the playoffs. And unfortunately, they were shut out 28-0 to end their season. LS, the pioneers for Anthony, as he's excited here on set, picked up a victory 34-19 over the former Millersburg Indian head coach Roy Wall led Northern Lebanon Vikings. Moving on into the other one, as previously discussed, Burgettstown was defeated, or excuse me, yes, was defeated by Steel Valley, 42 to nothing. We'll jump over so you can see the chart once again for Steve's victory year here, 8 and 0 atop of everyone. Unfortunately, we do not have a club bottom trophy for me to have, but that is totally fine because Steve's got the You Are the Winner trophy. We do have a few upcoming games left in the season for some hometown teams, two to be exact. The Riverside Steel Valley game that we talked about first, and then Lampeter Strasburg is going to travel to take on Bishop McDevitt, and that is a tough game. The fighting LaShawn McCoys out of Harrisburg, PA. But make sure you keep it here because we've got lots more still with this show. We've got West Virginia Roundup. We've got our Pick'em with the Jody High Roll, High Roll of the Week, and our top three plays. So make sure you keep it here on CUTV. Save preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. Welcome back to High School Roundup live here on CUTV as we start looking at the bigger schools here, the Quad A, 5A, and 6A schools. As we look now at the 4A scores and brackets from the Whitfield playoffs, Thomas Jefferson shutting out Bell Vernon 27 to nothing. But the bigger story, Montour upsetting South Fayette 35 to 27, Steve. That is absolutely unbelievable. <clears throat> Montour, their defense, they were entering halftime down by 13 points after being gashed for 202 first half passing yards and 24 second quarter points by South Fayette. Montour, their quarterback, Kaven Mormon, 15 for 21 in this game, 204 yards and 117 yards rushing. A big reason why this Montour team came out on top. South Fayette's uh, pristine quarterback, Drew Saxton, he was intercepted only five times all season. Montour, they came out, they picked him off three times just in the second half. 
Mormon and Brandon Lit Litford. They returned two of those interceptions over 70 yards each to inside the South Bay at five. And guess what? Both times they led to a Mormon rushing touchdown. It just goes to show how important those uh, turnovers are. And South Fayette, that is a huge upset. Yeah, and that's another reason. Uh, the second half points. South Fayette only scored three in the second half. Uh, they scored 24 in the second, which was fantastic in the second quarter. Uh, but you really have to translate that success over into the second half. And uh, those three interceptions, that can take a big toll, especially on the prolific quarterback, as we were talking about, Drew Saxton. Um, that can take a big toll on uh, just your overall success um, in, the, in this game and even into the playoffs. Looking at the bracket now, you kind of can figure it out yourself. Montour will be taking on Thomas Jefferson in the Quad A finals here at Heinz Field. Guys, this is a big game because Thomas Jefferson was probably thinking they would be taking on South Fayette. And now they see they're taking on Montour. Yeah, I think that they got the better end of the stick in, in regards of, I mean, the, the South Fayette. Right. Uh, I guess the, the historic success that they've had. Mm -hmm. um, but when you really look at it, Montour intercepting their quarterback three times uh, when he's only been intercepted five times all season. Thomas Jefferson really has to lock down um, because of the fact that they, they, I guess they don't have to prove anything. Right. Um, but in a sense, they kind of do, losing to Bell Vernon and then getting that revenge. Well, what I'm thinking is Bell Vernon, if they're going in thinking they're playing TJ and then they see that Montour's on the schedule now, uh, that could really hurt them mentally because they're like, okay, we don't have to, we're not playing South Fayette. Mm -hmm. We're going to take this one light. It's just Montour. I mean, it was a fluke game. We're going to beat them. You know, that you get into this, exactly. this we're going to win mentality, which you, you should go into every game having, but I think that could, that could possibly affect TJ going into the game. Yeah, definitely. And I have to say real quick, we were going to have highlights from Bell Vernon, Thomas Stepherson at Baldwin. However, because the Whippeal doesn't know their own rules, uh, we weren't able to go. The athletic director from Baldwin said that we weren't uh, allowed to go without written approval from the WPIAL, even though in their rule book it says th no more than three minutes of highlights is fine. So we apologize to our viewers that we were not able to get you highlights from Belvern and Thomas Jefferson. As we take a look now at the 5A scores here, McKeesport pulling the McKeesport and falling to Gateway 28-21. to The McKeesport curse still alive and kicking here. Penn Trafford defeating Upper St. Clair 35 to 14. Guys, McKeesport Gateway, a big game, a big upset for Gateway. Yeah, and just uh, just that that McKeesport curse. I don't know what else to say. I really wouldn't call this one an upset, honestly. They're two pretty evenly matched teams. Uh, I, I personally thought Gateway was the better team going into the season. Look at McKeesport's regular season, uh, losing to some not so great teams, but then beating, so that's McKeesport, that's McKeesport way. But I would love to go back to all the high school roundups that you picked in the sport and see your record uh, when you when you pick. I may have gotten one right. We got to wow. tally that up. Eventually. Yeah, we do. It, we'll, that's going to be our end of the year. Thing. Yeah, we yeah, it should tally be. it up. Yeah, and see. What end of the year banquet. Is. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll stay. Or tuned next show. Or next. I don't <laughs> know. We'll see. Show. We'll see what happens. There's, a, there's probably a lot to go through. <laughs> well, now look at the bracket. Gateway, of course, taking on Penn Trafford, and guys, Penn Trafford. Just squeaked out a victory against Fox Chapel in the first round. They almost lost a few times in the regular season. Should they be on upset alert here, guys? No. I, I don't think so. I mean, beating an upper St. Clair team, that's a pretty impressive victory. Um, and then taking on a Gateway team, I think that they have the upper hand in this one. This might be one of the better games that we're going to see, Penn Trafford and Gateway. I think Penn Trafford is going to come away with it. Is this a pick em, pick em game? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, then uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but I think Penn Trafford can really do some damage. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a look real quick, the 6A playoffs here. Pine Richland taking on Pittsburgh Central Catholic. And, guys, Pine Richland was the number 20 team in the country. They may have moved up. I have not checked yet on uh, on max preps, but Pittsburgh Central Catholic, a, a powerhouse in the Pittsburgh area, Pine Ridge, a powerhouse. I, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better right. championship game. And you know what? That North Allegheny Central Catholic, that's been a rivalry that's been going on for a long time because it's usually them in the finals. Now, Pine Richland uh, seeing if they could go up against the Pittsburgh powerhouses of Central Catholic. Yeah, that's a pretty good game. You're talking about that's one of the better games that we'll yeah. see the last game uh, yeah. with, with Gateway. Um, but I'm really certain oh, this, on that the, one. It this could is... go either way. Pine Richland can just absolutely dominate and blow out yet another team. 
or this is just going to be some hard-nosed, gritty football. And I think I think this might even be a low-scoring game. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. It, it might it, be it one of those go either way, out. right? Well, we're going to see if we're going to take a commercial break or not. I'm going to see what the producer, Gary Smith, puts up. But we've got West Virginia football. Nope, we're going to commercial break. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we have our pick em and our top three plays. Stay tuned, guys, because some great top three plays of, and the last top three plays of High School Roundup. So stay tuned. You're watching High School Roundup here on CTV. CUTV News Center is California University of Pennsylvania's award-winning student television newscast. Your source for live, local, late-breaking news. Forecasts from the Cal U Weather Center. The region's latest entertainment news. Balkan sports highlights and regional scoreboards. With television news coverage you can't get anywhere else. Watch it live Thursdays on CUTV and on demand. CUTV News Center. Online. All the time. Welcome back to High School Roundup Live here on CU TV as we are about ready to get going with our pick 'em here. The last pick 'em of High School Roundup before we crown the victor next week on High School Roundup. Here is the standings for you Twitter in sole position of first place. Danny, 6 0, is in second place. I am down in third place, 36 and 16. I have a lot of ground to make up over Twitter. But the storyline here, Jody High Roller is above 500. He went five and one. He is not in last place anymore. And Collins Puppy is in club bottom. Yeah, sorry, Puppy. But Jody High Roller is high rolling. And Dylan Goodday, you're my next victim because I'm coming right after you. If you didn't do a high roller, you would have went six and zero last week. Well, okay. Wow. <laughs> and you would have been tied for so, Dylan. So uh, let that sink in. Yeah, but I don't. I, yeah, but I'd rather uh, win on a high roll than lose. Or no, I'd rather lose on a high roll than win without a high roll. Okay, yeah, you know, so, you know so it's I'm like saying? an excuse. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. No, okay. no I'm, all we'll, I'm saying is we'll that see. We'll see. I'm going to go 6 and 0 with a high roll next week uh, and pass Dylan Godet. I don't think I can make up enough ground to get to Gary Smith, but <laughs> middle, of the, middle of the standings, I'd say that's a pretty good day at the office. Definitely a good day at the office. Steve, you were last last season. It's going to be interesting to see if you stay above last place this season. <laughs> so, I got bruised ribs. No more ribs. No more ribs for me. <laughs> we're going to take a look now at the first game that we are calling here. It's California versus Imani Christian. I'm going with Imani, uh, California. Danny, you're going with California. Steve and Gary have to do this live. Steve, where are you going? Oh, this is a tough one, man. This is a tough one. Um, I'm going to go... Oh, man, this is a tough one. I'll go California. Yeah, I think that's the right pick. Jelani Stafford in that defense, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to eat against that. Out of all the games, I think this would have been Steve's high roll. But oh, you, they do, you want to test get, me? They do you want to test intense. me? High roll of the week. Imani oh, Christian, geez. I'm going over. <laughs> Let's do it. You got to take risks. You got to risk it to get the biscuit. So put me over on Imani Christian. There it is. Oh, my God. Yeah, high roll here. of the week right there. As going into the double-A side of things, Washington versus Cardinal World, I think – this is going to be down to the wire. I think Cardinal World, the Catholic school here, has a good chance of defeating Washington. Danny, you disagree. You think Washington could win. Steve, where are you at? Did Dylan Goodhead put his picks in? Oh, probably not. Okay, so I'm going to go Cardinal World. I'm just going to, no, I'm going to go Washington. <laughs> Why are you guys going to Washington? I think that, I mean, we saw them in person, and, and we, we know their sheer strength. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of going with the, the historic, uh, you know, the Washingtons. I mean, both teams are pretty much experienced in the playoffs. Um, kind of just this was a toss-up for me. I, I had to pick Washington. I'm just going Washington because just the, I mean, they've always been rolling through the playoffs ever since watching that, watching them. So I, I, I'm just going them just because of their history. We're going to take a look now at the AAA game here. Aliquippa versus Quaker Valley. I'm going with Quaker Valley. Collins going with Quaker Valley. Danny is going with Aliquippa. Steve, where are you going? I'm staying with Aliquippa. Why do you guys like Aliquippa? I mean, come on, again, history. History, like, yeah. How are you going to go against Aliquippa? I mean, they're like the biggest powerhouse. I mean, they have like a dozen NFL 
players and that are play, currently playing right now. Darrell Revis, just one of them to name, not playing anymore. I don't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right now he's not. Right, yeah. It's, so. it's still, he, the, right. the historic success that Al Copa right. has had. Um, exactly. Offense deep, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm th picking Al Copa on this one. Moving on to our quad A bracket here. I'm the only one going Quaker Valley. Colin did just change his pick. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson versus Montour. I am picking Thomas Jefferson in this one. I think that Thomas Jefferson can beat this Montour team uh, because, well, if it's not South Bay yet. But... Steve, it's oh. a matter of where you think you're going. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to go with Thomas Jefferson. I've been uh, picking them this whole time, and the only time they did me wrong was against Bell Vernon, and that was a fluke. They shocked everybody with yeah. that with that, that was upset. A fluke. Yeah. So I'm going to stay with them. Gary saying going with Montour, and Twitter going with Montour. So we'll see how that shapes out. Going to the 5A bracket a game here, Penn Trafford versus Gateway. I'm sticking with Penn Trafford. I like Penn Trafford. I think they have a good chance of be defeating this Gateway team. Gary's going Penn Trafford. Danny went Penn Trafford. Steve, are you staying Penn Trafford? Um, yeah, I'm going to stay Penn Trafford on this one. It's a safe it's bet. A good it's definitely a safe bet. Like yeah. I said, I think this is, this oh, is, is one of those. Oh, is it a safe bet? I don't take safe bets. Put me at gateway, baby. Put me at gateway. Jeez, I don't take safe Two bets. Two high rolls? Jeez, Is that a thing? No, that's not a, that's not a high roll. His first one was a high roll. He didn't announce this one as a high roll. I think. It's not a safe bet. It's different than a high roll. <laughs> we'll see what happens with this one, guys. <laughs> we shall see indeed as we look at the 6A game. Pine Richland taking on Pittsburgh Central Catholic. I'm sticking with Pine Richland, but... I do think Pittsburgh Central Catholic could give Pine Richland a run for their money in this one. I think so too, but I think Pine Richland is just the uh, better team in this one. I mean, number 20 in the country, and I, I'm probably moving up. So I'm going to go over to uh, Pine Richland and uh, stick with the big guns. And one of the first times that everybody has picked one team, uh, it kind of always seems like Twitter is one of those uh, deciding factors. Oh. Amongst everything. Everyone's picking the same oh, team. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> well, last say. week we had two. Everyone picking the same one. Uh -huh. Washington versus East Allegheny. Oh, okay. And uh, there was there was another one. I forget. I think it was Aliquippa Beaver. Mm. Yeah. Aliquippa was the lockdown on that one. But guys, that's our pick'em, and we'll have a, a winner next week as we have our top three plays. It's all from California Union. But Danny, here you go. Take a look at this top play from California Union. And right here, we're going to see California and Colin Phillips, Jelani Stafford, just staying on his feet, kind of uh, reminiscent of the McGuffey uh, run. A little bit shorter, but nonetheless, California still getting on the right side of him. Number two, Steve, here you go. It's the opening kickoff. And it is the opening kickoff. Union really making a huge statement, picking that ball up in a huge run, breaking a couple tackles, and then right there, an elusive, uh, an evasive move. To make his way to the sideline, just missing a tackle there, finding his way into the end zone, opening score. Number one play here, I just thought it was an amazing catch and helped the Union get a touchdown later as Evan Pinkerton with a 37-yard pass that's bobbled and is able to be caught there as he's falling down to his brother, Seth Pinkerton, but that is not going to be enough to upset this Blue Ribbon play. And guys, this will most likely stay the Blue Ribbon play into our top 10 uh, that we will do next week. Yeah, and I mentioned, I mean, Jelani Stafford's run, almost uh, kind of reminiscent of this, staying on his feet. Um, but this run is just, it's just too impressive. Yeah, I've seen, I saw a couple of LH plays that were maybe <laughs> a little better than that one. That's just my own personal opinion. And I'm not even doing that to be sarcastic in a, in a sarcastic way. I truly think I came across a couple of Laurel Highlands plays. It wasn't always Laurel Highlands. It was the team they were facing uh, with Connor Basinger, their quarterback. Uh, he made a run earlier this season that was identical to that one, and I don't even think it made the top three plays. I'm just saying, there's a little bias going I on. didn't see it. Well, when, when you produce the show next year, you can make sure you put those No, I'm just in. saying. I'm just saying. I'm just, I didn't see it. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying as well. I'm just saying. Just, okay. Well, when I do the top ten plays, I'll make sure I look for those plays. There, all right. There you go. But, Thank you all for watching, guys. Any final thoughts on next week's playoff football, the last high school roundup as well next week? It's sad. That's your last yeah. high school roundup, Anthony. It's upsetting. I know. We can keep them going. We can just do them. Like, 
There's no football we can still do. Shaking his head no. He uh-huh. hates us. Uh-huh. But uh, no, it's been a it's been a great season. One more episode. That's probably the most fun episode that we have. Oh yeah, is the one with all the with the hundred or <laughs> the ten the hundred <laughs> <laughs> the ten uh, top ten plays of the season. So I'm excited for that. It's been a great season. It has. It definitely has. And, and even the past two years um, with the three of us up here and different people coming on. Matt Hagee coming on a few oh, yeah. times. Um, but yeah, it's just been it's been a fun ride. So. Yeah. That has, and we'll get to the emotional stuff next week. <laughs> as uh, this has been a great episode of High School Round. Thank you all for watching. Danny Beck, Stephen Ruffing, thank you to you guys as well for your analysis of high school football. Thanks to Colin Kirkwood, our hometown scoreboard uh, correspondent. Thank you to Gary Smith, our producer and director in the studio. And thank you all for watching live High School Round on CUTV. I've been Anthony Diagostino. Thank you for watching, and have a great week.